Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Hola, you amazing artists. Today I am going to attempt to do something uh, that I have not attempted to do in the past, which is tell my story on how I started in my whole art career thing. So I've been asked by a few of you about my origin story uh, for being a full-time artist. And um, every time I try to tell this story, so many different things happened in order to put me where I'm at right now that I feel like it's going to be really long. So I'm going to try to give you the Cliff Notes version of Rafi's origin story. Bum bum bum! My origin story melody is <laughs> Thank you, I, I appreciate it. Okay, okay, I think they get it. Oh god. <laughs> so let me start at the beginning. Ever since I can remember, I've always loved drawing and sketching and painting and creating things out of clay and doing all kinds of creative things. And I won't bore you guys with the details, but as I got older, I kept drawing because I was a quiet kid, kind of a nerdy kid and drawing was my outlet. Some people do sports, some people do other things, you know, delve into academia or whatever it is. Um, I loved drawing and creating artwork. Cut several years into the future and I'm in high school and I am used to getting A's in all my art classes and it looks like I'm going to get a scholarship to go to an art school which was super exciting and then I got into a huge argument with my junior year teacher and told him off in the classroom, my art teacher, and kind of blew scholarship. So then later on I went to my family owned a jewelry store and I went to go work at the jewelry store and I was there and my father and pretty much a lot of the members of my family didn't understand the whole art thing and wanting to make a career out of that. They didn't see how that was a possibility. So they kind of dissuaded me from doing that and focusing more on the family business. I think the direct quote was, you think you're gonna make money with your stupid little drawings? And your stupid little pictures, you gotta work here, like I did, and like my father did. That's pretty that much, pretty yeah, that's pretty much how it went. After we got into a huge argument about something, I left the jewelry store, went into a job, and then worked my way up to management, and then worked in corporate management for about 12 years. So mind you, this entire time I had some kind of art outlet, like I I still drew and I still did things. I was, I was a closet artist, pretty much. Uh, so like I give stuff to my friends and my family, but as far as like actually showing my art to the world, I was too terrified to do that, so I, I just didn't even try. Cut to a few years later and I'm in Chicago working a corporate job and a friend of mine actually submitted my pieces to the Museum of Contemporary Art. Starbucks and the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago were doing uh, this event called Art Van Grande. My friend submitted my stuff, which I would have never done because I was terrified and I got accepted. So I showed my stuff at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago. That was my first brush with like getting into the art world, especially in a big city like Chicago. And a lot of the art gallery district people and like critics came by and they saw my work and they loved my work and they said that they wanted to see it bigger. And of course at the time, because I was so insecure, I thought that bigger meant that my work wasn't good enough as is and that I was a failure. Because of that experience, I didn't try to actually show my work anymore. It's really dumb when I think about it now, but that's where I was then. I was so insecure and so afraid that um, any comment, even a good one, seemed like a negative comment. It's one of the reasons that my videos are very much based on like where your mindset is and how you're feeling because you could be surrounded by opportunities, but if you don't believe in yourself, uh, you may not see them as opportunities. So either way, several years later, I went through I went through a shift in my life where I realized that I hated being in corporate. I remember waking up one morning and seeing myself in the mirror and wondering who was that guy that was looking at me and realized that I did not want to do the corporate thing anymore. 
that I was extremely unhappy in my life and that it was time to do something else. I didn't know what that something else was, but it was time to do something else. Some events took place in my life that pretty much left me with a old beat up 92 Ford Explorer and I decided that I was going to see the country. I wanted to travel the country and see the country and experience life and maybe find myself. I think I was on a journey of self-exploration. And then I showed up on the scene. Yeah. So before I left on my trip where I was going to be living in my car, I meet Clee. Clee falls in love with me and Clee decides that she's going to turn her back on the condo and all the things that she had established in her life to go with me and live in my car. When we left Illinois, we had like $400 that I had saved up. And uh, my only thing with myself was that I was not going to ask for a handout. I was not going to beg for money. That we would figure it out out on the road. And sure enough, we traveled around the country for about two years. Seven months of that, we lived in Key West. Just had an adventure of a lifetime. The journey helped us investigate ourselves and really take a deep look into ourselves and who we were and what it was that we wanted out of life. Not to say that we got all the answers because I don't think that you ever find all the answers. I think your journey is just, you know, you, you just keep expanding and growing throughout your entire journey. At some point we came to Pensacola because my dad was having open heart surgery. My dad had a booth at the Gulf Breeze flea market. So we were staying with him, taking care of him after his open heart surgery and decided that we were going to open up our our booths. And so Clee opened up a jewelry booth and I did not open anything up because I was still utterly terrified to show my artwork even though I had gone through a self-exploration and things like that and I knew that I loved creating art but I was still too chicken shit to do it. Until one day it rained. Yeah. So basically my entire art career started one day when it rained and the area where Clee's booth was with her jewelry got flooded out but I didn't want to lose that space because it allowed us to park our cool truck right there so I decided I was going to do something there anyway and ba -ba, Rafi was here studios got started we had we had a bunch of paint that we traveled around the country with acrylic paints and stuff that were all like dry and gross and and whatever but I had an entire bin full of it so I had paint we found pieces of wood certain people that had extra poster board that they were getting rid of gave me poster board. I basically started painting on anything that I could get my hands on. I created anything that I could with what we had available to us. That's how I got started. It wasn't, I didn't have any like financial backing or anything like that. I just started with what I had available to me at the time that I had it available. After being at the flea market for a while, I realized that I did not want to be at the flea market, that there was a cap to how much I could accomplish being a flea market artist. And I seriously didn't want to be known as a flea market artist. I decided to leave there and start doing the Pal Fox Market, which is a farmer's market that happens in downtown Pensacola. There is a monthly event that happens called Gallery Night, so I started showing my stuff at Gallery Night. There were certain small events that were going on in town where you could apply to show your stuff, and we did that. We got really used to doing something where we were showing our work every single weekend so pretty much if we could Friday Saturday and Sunday we were at some kind of event somewhere showing our work and we did that for the first two years we just showed our work and showed our work and showed our work and whenever we weren't showing our work we were in the studio creating work creating work creating work showing work showing work showing work creating work and I'd also like to add that we were terrified like 70% of the time yes Yes, terrified. As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, there is no guidebook that walks you through, like, how do you create a successful art career? You know, it, there just isn't. It was what felt right to us. But because it felt right to us, I wasn't sure if that's what you were supposed to do, you know, because I was under the impression that there was some kind of secret that I, I was missing out on. Why am I not successful yet? What, you know, why is this so hard? It took about six to seven months of making no money to 
barely scraping by to be able to pay our bills. And even after that, it took about two years for us to get to a place where we were comfortable. But Clee and I were used to that because, like I said before, we left and hit the road with no plan and no money. And I feel like had we not challenged ourselves outside of that security blanket, a lot of the risks that we took that absolutely terrified us, we may not have taken. Even with all of the experience that we've had and everything, even till this day, if something is slightly outside of my comfort zone, I have a hard time doing it. I have to like remind myself like it's okay, it's gonna work out or it won't work out. Either way, it's fine. Then around that time, uh, we got into the Marty Campbell Gallery and I had a big solo exhibition, which was cool because it was over 100 pieces. Um, I showed at several different other places. We got interviewed by newspapers, magazines. We got interviewed on Blab TV. Different things that happened and it was all kind of organic, the way that it fell together. We just made it a point to keep having fun no matter what. So our approach with our marketing was always fun. We had no idea what we were doing. We were just kind of following our gut and going through and doing what we could do. Did we have a few years there? that were rough financially yes yes there were was it easy no it wasn't easy at all was it frightening yes it was absolutely frightening there is no easy answer to this there is no straightforward answer to this how did I create my art career I did it my way the only way that I know how because I didn't know any better and I think that that worked in my favor because I tried everything. There wasn't a step one, step two, step three, you got to do this, you got to do that, and you got to do that process. There was just kind of look around for the opportunities, see what it is that you have available for you to make it work for you right now. Don't wait and pine for something that you don't have in order to finally do this thing that you want to do. Just do it now with what you have available because that's all you could do. If you want something bad enough, you will reach for it and grasp for it and reach for it as many times as you have to and try as many ways of getting to it as you can without giving up. Because honestly, you can't fail at anything that you set your mind to unless you actually give up. And that's the truth. The only reason that I am a full-time artist, that Klee is a full-time artist, is because we just didn't give up. That's not to say that it wouldn't have been easy to give up because there were several times that I wanted to give up that I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to go get a job because this is too hard. I don't know where my next money is going to come from or where our next meal is going to come from. But something was different this time, maybe due to our trip, maybe due to just changes within me that I wasn't willing to give up. And that's it. That's that's my origin story. Um, cool origin story, bro. <laughs> Thanks. I wish there was more of a step one, step two, step three thing that I could go through in my origin story for you guys. But the truth is, it's your journey. You got to figure this out. The best thing I could do is tell you what my story was and tell you that it is possible. I mean, honestly, if it's possible for somebody like me who really has no clue what he's doing, then it's most definitely possible for you. Hopefully I didn't bore you guys with uh, my origin story. The origin story of artist Rafi Perez. If you are doing your art full time, I would love to hear your origin story. And if you guys have any questions about art or life, just leave them in the comment section below. Include your information so I could check out your artwork if that's available. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are totally freaking awesome. I absolutely adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.